Okay, hello, hello. Hi, Facebook and YouTube. It is so awesome to see you here again today. I am Nassine. And we are the co-founders of Explore Prozac Entrepreneurial Haven. Um, we are actually traveling at the moment. So we are now currently further up country in South Africa in Port of Sturm. We are spending some time at the townhouse. We will later on or maybe possibly tomorrow be going up to the farm, mm -hmm. which is actually a game farm. Um, I've actually learned so uh, over the last couple of days, I think I've learned so much um, just experiencing a life on a game farm and the natural environment. And um, especially the owner of the farm is just a natural storyteller. So, um, Roger family, thank you very much. Yeah. It's been exceptional. Awesome. Okay. So, you are watching the Coffee Shop Conversation Show. This is where we get um, real entrepreneurs to give us their real questions. Then we pin down all of the expert entrepreneurs in our tribe and we make them answer your questions. So that is going to be fun. Um, we're going to have this again today, as usual, in a game show format. So what we will be doing is me and Peter will cue the questions. If you are a tribe member on the show today or an expo guest, feel free to put up your hearts. You get to answer questions and give your value. If you are just spectating and you're here as a guest, feel free to sit back, relax, and get, get, get active in the chat. There's so many awesome people to meet and talk to. And um, yeah, ask us your questions if you have any so that we can make our tribe members answer you. If you are a tribe member and you want to ask a question, put up your heart. We will pick the heart from there. We'll pick about three people per question yeah, to give their answers. So. And everyone that's speaking during the show gets linked in the actual description. So you can go and find them there mm. and connect with them. Peter, we're losing sound. Are we losing sound? Yeah. Is that better? Okay, I can hear you now. There we go. Awesome. So the point of the show is to actually guide an audience to people that actually have the answers. So if you're watching the show and you come across somebody that you resonate with or somebody that you think, I need to speak to this person some more, that is the point. So their links will be in the description. Reach out, have a coffee. They're all open to it, So which is great. So let's have some fun. Right, guys, you're open to coffees, right? <laughs> like a confused look. <laughs> awesome. Okay, here we go. Peter, do you have a question? I do, but you're currently typing them. They're over there. Oh, okay. I'll put you. <laughs> Can you read us the first question, please? Okay. The first question is actually by Preston. And the question is, if I want to be a self-made millionaire in 10 years from now, what do I have to do from today to plan financially for that? Oh, that is a cool question. So who wants to answer? And who wants to be a millionaire? If I want to be a self-made millionaire in 10 years from now, what do I have to do from today to plan financially for that? Okay, so three people have volunteered to be put right on the spot. Let's hear your best answers. Shall we go with Sharon? And Sharon, you are an actual financial planner, so I feel like a good hand. Yeah, I think this question's right up my street that I can, um, we, we can get onto subject that I know that I'm very familiar with. Um, obviously, having a strategy in place is the best place to start. One has to know where you are, you have to know where you're going, and then you can work out how you're going to get there. And everybody's journey is absolutely different. So it's very unique to um, every single individual. And that's what we as advisors do. We, we have a look at uh, current life. We have a look at the future picture, the dream. What is the dream? And then work out how to get them there. So yeah, book for coffee. I'll help you get there. And I Sarah, love that answer. Financial solutions. <laughs> 
Thank you, Sharon. Okay, so Sharon being cheeky, saying if we want to be self-made millionaires, we got to talk to her. Sharon, I'll be booking my coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're lucky. She's my sister. <laughs> so why aren't you a millionaire yet? <laughs> we need to talk about this. <laughs> okay. We do indeed. <laughs> next up, um, go for maybe Mr. Westwood from the UK. Hello. Um, so I'm going to answer this from less of a financial perspective because I'm not a financial expert. But if you want to become a self-made millionaire in 10 years, then you need to focus and you need to focus on what brings you money and only focus on those sorts of activities. Um, that, that That's the way that a lot of self-made millionaires have become so inclined they've worked really hard on developing a product and service that meets the requirements of their target audience and by focusing the generating that income um i could go on about you know making sure that you value yourself properly and value your services properly but that that's a whole different conversation thank you very much stephen westwood sbw copywriting um if I'm not mistaken, Stephen, um, when you talk about focus, um, a little bird told us that you've written a book about goal setting. So I'm pretty sure that if somebody needs to focus, I'm pretty sure they can actually get themselves the book and that will help them a lot. Okay, the book is coming, the book is coming out. I know, <laughs> I know it's coming out. Amazing. So we'll see Stephen's book now. Um, okay, so, 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 so far the plan is read the book. I found the book. I found the book. It's here. <laughs> You can get it. It's on Amazon. Am I muted still? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. So, so far, the you. Is buy the book, set your goals, get focused. Talk to the financial and talk coach. to the financial advisor. Yep. Okay. okay. We're getting there. We're okay. Getting there. Next up, let's go for Janine. Janine, I know like, you are super busy building like 10 empires at the same time. So I'm very keen to hear this. Yeah, it's an awesome question and um, thanks for the opportunity. But my my tip or guide would be is assemble the right team of advisors. That is very, very important. Don't just do your research and find the right people that will give you the right advice. And obviously setting goals is very, very important because you can measure your, your journey of becoming a millionaire and share that with those who would like to become a millionaire. And um, there's a lot of those advisors in this room. So please connect with them and have coffees. Don't delay. I am Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. Thank you, Janine. And I just, I, I love that. That's actually, like, I know it feels sometimes like we're not giving you like, okay, but what do I really have to do to be a millionaire? But seriously, I got to my first bar in turnover in business in three years by myself. I could never go past that. And I want to go past that. I want to build a freaking empire. The only way like I can get there is with these people around me. And that's why they're here, to build my empire. <laughs> so, wrong show, wrong show. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What I mean is everyone should be doing this, no, seriously. <laughs> okay, um, and then the last person on this topic, so Jacques, what do we have to do if we want to be self-made millionaires in 10 years? What do we start doing today? Okay, so fundamentally, I have a issue with self-made. There's no such thing as a self-made millionaire. You rely on others to help you. So like Jelani said, form a team. So you need a tribe. Um, and it's from, from anybody, from your parents upwards uh, to help you. So, so don't think you can ever do it by yourself. The second thing, and, and I think you need to speak to Sharon, is I do profit first, um, which being an entrepreneur is no fun if you're always spending money and you've never got any for yourself. So I put away 10% for myself every month of every penny I make. And at the end of six months, I spend 50% on it on something for me. Because if you keep doing this and you never see any reward, you, it becomes quite debilitating. The second thing I would recommend is... Um, Turnover is not is not going to make you a millionaire. You have to look at reality, and, and often we don't look at reality. You need to look at your um, profit margin. You need to look at your tax, and suddenly that job that you thought was making you millions is actually 
not making you a lot of money. In fact, you could work as a waiter and make more money in, in some cases when you look at what you're actually making profit-wise. So the last thing I want to say, grow up in your business and take your finances seriously. And the reason I can say that I've been in business since 98, I've made untold millions and I don't have a cent because I've spent untold millions. Because what I do is I have everything in one bank account and I think, oh my God, look at all this money and I just spend it. So the other tip I can give you is separate your bank accounts, have at least five bank accounts. And like our parents used to do in the war, have an envelope system and put that money is for rent, that money is for this, that money is for... And once it runs out, you can't touch it. Um, and get yourself a book called The Millionaire Next Door. And it's about postal workers, you know, your general, anybody, you know, teachers, whatever, who are millionaires after 40 years because they, they just frittered a bit of money away every month. And, and then 40 years later, it grew. Um, so, yeah, that's a long-winded way of going about it. But the last thing you want to end up, grow up in your business, you have to look at your finances properly. So get someone like Sharon to help you. And if you get that RA and the tax breaks, just put that money away. And then last thing, Jelani is going to help you because without sales, nothing happens. Sales and marketing, doesn't. I don't care how good your product is or how good you are, if you don't sell and market, it's not going to happen for you. So you have to, in fact, the best thing I can say, invest money in learning how to sell and market. That'll be the best investment for you. The rest then happens organically. Okay, that's all I have to say. Jog, the crowd is going wild on Zoom, Facebook, and YouTube right now. So I am super impressed. <laughs> Basically, so speak to Sharon and grow up. Then speak to Janine and Stephen. Now buy the book from Stephen. I'm very <laughs> this was awesome job thank you so much that was that was really really valuable advice i love the profit first um you know focus because i'm guilty of just doing things for love and charity <laughs> Stephen is not in his and, and just doing things because because i wake up in the morning and i'm like i feel like doing this today like why not but if you want to not end up in a space where you're completely demotivated, have no money, and still you're working 99 with the day, you need to grow up a little bit. And start. Excellent advice. Thank you, Doc. I love it. Okay, Peter, next question. Oh, I, don't, I think I can teach, I can teach for the next question. So I think it's... Remember to read them twice so that the people can get the chance to think about it. Here's the question Is it possible? to save yourself rich. I think that's something I need to think about because I think I've spent my savings. I okay, so, I will tell you guys the story. So the question again is, is it possible to save yourself rich? Hmm. Let's ponder that for a second. Okay, while you're thinking about that, I want to see some hearts if you're happy to answer that. I saved. I, so my whole childhood, basically, like my dad had, had, had so much of a love for teaching me about um, entrepreneurship and finances. So my whole childhood, I would do like different little jobs and waitress and whatever. And I would always save all the money. And before I left school, I had saved 250,000 rand um, just through all of that. Like I was super into, I had like, I started selling rocks when I was three years old. Terrible. I painted the rocks first. I painted natural earth rocks. Just, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just so that you're clear. Anyway, so 250,000 rand I saved, and then I invested that in an app that never came to life. So I lost all of that. But I'm, I, and then after that, I was kind of like, well, why save this team? <laughs> You just kind of spend it. <laughs> anyway, so I want to hear from you guys. Um, can you save yourself rich? If you had some hearts, and I think Rita was one of the hearts. Thank you, Nestine. I actually want to share this story, and it, it comes from where I grow up, from this farmer that had three kids, 
he had two farms, two sons and a daughter. And the intention was to leave the two farms to his son, so I just said to his daughter. He bought in 1948, he bought Rembrandt shares. And I think he paid a hundred pounds then. He died around about 2000. You can understand how much money those <laughs> hundred pound Rembrandt shares was worth. Yes, it was lying there. He did not touch it. It was worth more than the two farms together. And then the two farms were in the region of six million bucks. So, yes, we can say. And there are various vehicles to do that. You need to find the right one that fits you. Rita Skuma, Coaching with Heart. Thank you for that story, Rita. Mm. Um, it's true. Making smart investments is a very, very smart way to actually channel your savings. Yeah, but I think when making smart investments, you should speak to your financial advisor first because they seem to understand and know what is smart and what is not. Mm. So let's go on that note then back to Sharon. Sharon, you had your heart up. As a financial advisor, you should be able to tell us. Is it possible to save yourself rich? Um, I think the first thing that one has to determine is what is rich for you. Um, because riches mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And when you say, is it possible to save yourself rich? It takes a long time to save yourself rich. So yes, I believe that there, I mean, even in Rita's story, um, so yes, put money aside and leave it for a long, long, long time. But when do we actually want to enjoy those riches? So I think it's part of a plan that you put together. And I don't really like using the word plan even because um, it sounds so clinical. But um, there's various ways of growing riches. You can be invested correctly. You can um, spend less. You can um, uh, structure what you have in such a way that you can extend the, 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 the lifetime of it. Um, but some of the riches you actually want to bring forward and, um, uh, and enjoy them while you still can. Um, but so in truth, can you save yourself rich? Yes, but it's such a small part of the Mm. It's, it's a small part of the journey. Awesome. That is really, really food for mm. thought. Um, let's go to Stephen. Stephen, can you save yourself, Rich? See, I don't think you can. Um, if you're taking money that you're earning and you're putting it into a piggy bank, let's say, as an example, yes, you can accumulate the money, but you're not doing anything with it. Saving usually has a purpose. You're saving for a house or you're saving for a car or you're saving for your retirement or you're saving for something down the line. If you look at the average salary, I know that we're talking entrepreneurship here, but if we look at the average salary, there is no way that you can actually save yourself rich. And if you were to get yourself into a position where you can save quite a lot of money, I should imagine that you've sacrificed quite a lot of your life in order to save this money. Um, so that's where things like investment or uh, looking for opportunities where you can actually increase your money that you have saved will come in handy. Um, I actually think that Jacques has a very good point to make on this particular subject. So I would like to pass over to him if that's possible. That is very possible. Just quickly answer me this. Is that why you got into entrepreneurship? Because that's that's why I got on, into entrepreneurship. I, I hit the ceiling with the salary path and I was like, I want more. No, I got into entrepreneurship because I hate being told what to do. <laughs> okay, I can relate to that as well. Okay, cool. Okay, Jacques. Speed of week, copywriting. Thank you, Stephen. Let's go to Jacques. So Sharon would tell you that you can't save yourself rich if you look at just purely at money because if our inflation if you if you if you earn 12 percent and your inflation is nine percent you're always at three percent it's a race downhill 
uh, or four percent. So you can't save yourself rich, but the value of saving it gives you a discipline. So don't start thinking, oh, let me try go into this, let me go into gold, let me go into that. You first have to take baby steps and actually get the discipline to save. So that that starts you growing up as as it were to save. So now you and 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 as you get more accumulate more wealth then you go into gold, silver, Bitcoin, whatever it is that you want to go into. And I, I'm not an expert on these things, property, et cetera, et cetera. So you do, you do need to divest. Uh, and then the reality is if you're looking at your retirement at 65 uh, or 70, these days, I don't, none of us can retire. But if you want to earn, if, if you want to earn 20,000 Rand a month for when you retire, you know this, you need 4 million Rand cash in the bank because for every million rand it's five thousand rand that they pay you so do the math 99 percent of us in this room will never be there i can tell you that right now this is the reality uh, so we're just going to be so just love working because it's you know i just want to die of a heart attack on stage or in front of my keyboard it's fabulous um but i want to i want to go with two women on my side and a cigar in my mouth and a whiskey in my hand and just say that was fun um but the reality is that most of us are not going to be able to retire. It's just, it's impossible the way, because you really have to make huge amounts of money and be disciplined to put it away. So once again, I was not drolen in drunk water, British. So I, I kind of took the motivation out of everybody, but I work in reality and those are the realities. I love it, Jock. And so does everyone else. I think you're becoming one of our favorite like YouTube stars. It's like people want to watch the coffee shop show just so they can see what Jog does next. It's yeah, becoming yeah, like look, that. Listen, um, I want to I want to go with Voltaire. Voltaire was a philosopher, and before he as he died, he was about to die. And um the priest said, You need to renounce Satan. And he said, This is no time to be making new enemies. So I cannot, don't use my humor. I've got so few friends. This is no time for me to be on stage because I don't want to lose all of you as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, I mean, um, I have no say. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Okay, <laughs> I think bye. Fun. Um, okay, I actually um, agree with everything that you said except for everyone in this room is not going to be able to retire job we're going to the forbes 500 list everyone gets a jet like everyone uh, in this room did you uh, not read the memo I, I forgot sorry i'm you know i've always been a glass <laughs> of empty guy so yeah <laughs> so it's just my nature but no great we're all gonna fucking do it and dent the universe and more everything we are all gonna get our jet and go wild so that's my motiv last motivational talk for the year love it and Epic. Stephen almost fell off his chair <laughs> <laughs> thank you jock okay Janine, that's a tough act to follow but i know you also really wanted to say something on this topic so can you save yourself rich look it's a big debate um it is really a big debate because it comes back to what sharon also said is what is rich what is rich to you each and every one has got their own rich. And if rich is to help other people with employment, fantastic. Good to see you if you need to be rich financially. Well done to you. Each one has got the individual rich. But what I want to say is just, you know, money is hard to earn and it's easy to lose. All I want to say is just guard it with care and grow up by doing that. Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. Thank you, Janine. I appreciate that. Okay, awesome. Um, can we do the next question? I'm like blown away. This is the most fun financial planning. Yeah. <laughs> you think we should go with Derek? Yes, let's do Derek. Okay, let's do Derek. Derek, we're doing you. Okay. What are your best financial planning hacks for entrepreneurs? Please. So, your best financial planning hacks for entrepreneurs. I'm sure there must be a few hacks out there. 
Maybe we must first ask who here does financial planning. <laughs> do any of you ever do your financial planning, or do you do just the core work? Okay, let's go with yay. Okay, there's like three little people stepping in. Okay. So Leanne, we don't usually do this, but we're going to pull you into the show right onto the stage because you sort of survived Janine in her wig and because it looks like you have something interesting to say. So do you want to share with us what is your best financial planning hack? Um, okay, so for my business, I'm a virtual assistant. So I um, work online, obviously. So my financial hack was to keep everything as low as possible for overheads and costs so I don't have an office I work from home um, and just to look and um, evaluate any packages or any applications or anything that I needed for my business to really go in depth and look at all the different types of services they were or what it offered in terms of something else so like um an instance would be one of those password protectors. I used to use LastPass and I've moved away into one password. It was just a better security and I could have a lot more function and it, it allowed me to do and share with different people as well. And I've also from there just created a whole family vault for me and my partner and everything. So yeah, my, my financial hack would be to try and keep your costs obviously low as possible, but also when you do need to spend, research what you need to spend and like really go into depth of what it can give you and what you need. Don't just take it because it's there. Thank you, Leanne. That was brilliant. And that is Leanne from... Sorry, Al Webster, virtual assistant. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. We will link the one password for you in the description. That was fabulous. Let's hear from Megan. Megan, what is your best financial planning hack? Hi, everybody. Yeah, I think um, I share with Leanne in that regard is being in the space of also trying to help businesses. I always look at where they are free. There's loads of freemium stuff out there. So supporting us when we're starting out. Um, so that's one key thing that I agree, totally go with the cheaper where we can, but as you grow, make sure you grow your system with you, because sometimes you can outgrow the system. There's maybe three things. So that was the one thing. The second thing is, um, I, it's, it may not be a hack, but I think it's a must, is tracking. So we get so lost with tracking. So like, we're like, oh my gosh, why, why have I spent so much money this month? Or what did I even spend my money? Or why have I got more money in my bank account? And then before you blink your eyes, you're like, oh my gosh, okay, so there we go. There's 3,000 Rand paid for, you know, services rendered, the service, whatever it may be. So yeah, track if you can. I know it's a painful exercise, but it's really not that bad. You pop out an Excel document if you have to and income and expenses, it helps us and it motivates us. So when we do actually make a positive, we're like, oh my gosh, I made profits whatever it may be. So I think that's maybe more just a tip because that's something that we often forget about. It doesn't matter how big or small your business is. It doesn't matter. I think we need to know what we're spending our money on. Otherwise, we're just going to keep spending. And then I had a third one, but now it's lost. Yeah. But anyway, that's me. That's Megan from the Marketing Lifeline. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Megan. That was an epic, epic answer. Megan from the Marketing Lifeline. I love that. Um, I hate doing the tracking and the admin stuff, but I must say, every time I actually do it, I do end up saving us money. <laughs> but just because you don't like doing something, it doesn't mean you can't find people that you actually do like doing that. So reach out to people that like doing those things. That's what virtual assistants are for. That's what financial planners are for. That's what accountants are for. Hello. In fact, marketers. our accountants are so busy, they're not even here, but we have them. We, <laughs> sorry, Peter, you actually, you're so right. That was my third tip is don't wait too long to outsource it neither, because sometimes it costs you money by trying to do it yourself. Thanks for reminding me. That was my third tip. Absolutely. Don't wait too long. If somebody can help you at a quicker rate, can take time out of your diary and you can make money servicing clients. Do it sooner than later. So
Yeah, I, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. I mean, I mean, if you look at what, I mean, when you look at a service like that and you think, oh my goodness me, it's going to cost me this much, but the question is, what is it going to save you, and what is it going to make for you? Mm. If you got to weigh, you got to weigh up those odds. Mm. Interesting enough, like I just quickly want to share with you guys, my financial hack is bulk buying. I am very good at it. <laughs> I've never seen so much rice in my life. Before I actually do our grocery shopping, my thing is I treat every single thing that I buy for uh, for the business or for ourselves as a procurement exercise. So I am from the accounting industry, but I treat it as procurement, which means my job is to get the highest quality goods and services that will fulfill the job or, you know, fulfill the need at the lowest price possible. So I will actually, before I do my, finalize my grocery shopping for the month, I take about a day just researching what specials are going on, what is happening everywhere, like what recipes can we put together. And in that way, I think I've cut down our grocery expense to about 2,000 rand a month for both of us. Which is amazing. So, yeah, it's um, procurement, basically what Leanne said, but that's my hack is bulk buying. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so we have like a container below our sink of uh, 10 liters of sunlight liquid. <laughs> and I love it. I love it so much. Because every time I see it, I know that I don't have to buy the this of like 40 rand sunlight liquid that month like we have the 10 liter i'm saving so anyway i'm a total geek when it comes to saving money so janine you had your heart up um what is the question <laughs> the best financial <laughs> hack please sorry it's friday <laughs> No, it's fine. Um, for me, it's to, to focus on customer um, equation. So without customers, you have no business. Remember that. And the sooner you figure that out, um, the better you can acquire customers to scale and the greater the chances of your company to actually make it. And that is one of the hacks that um, I am learning even now that I am in the sales and marketing VA industry. I'm learning that now. And because I'm learning that, I can give you that hack because it is absolutely the proof is in the pudding so yeah that is that is one of the hacks and the other one as well with what what megan is saying is outsource outsourcing becomes a collaboration partner for your business get to know that word very well and action it i am janine from jelani sales your virtual sales office thank you janine i love it and it's such a comforting thought to know that there's someone out you out there to take care of sales because at one point in my business, I was in that space where I'm like, oh my goodness, if I don't phone these 100 people, then and I'm not like, what if they, and I, oh, it's terrible. But like someone like you that can take care of that initial process, so there's at least money coming in. That's a freaking fantastic hack, I think. And I, and I, and I think the nice thing about networking in this kind of space is that we have different virtual assistants. We have virtual assistants that specialize in different things. Um, and I think it's because of the microphone. I'll switch it out. I'll lean in closer. Um, so we have we have virtual assistants that specialize in different things, and it it basically means that you can cover yourself from every different perspective, whether it be in your personal capacity or whether it be in your business. Um, it doesn't matter what arena you're in. There is always somebody that specializes in a very unique niche aspect of what it is that you do, from financial planning to whether it's booking your tickets for an airplane flight or whether it's, it doesn't matter what it is, there is always somebody that you can connect to that specializes in exactly that. Even helping you with getting specials on rice and sunlight liquid. Just saying. <laughs> I love it. I'll send you my contact, Judy. Um, just by the way, so I have just one more hack. And this is something I'm also very passionate about. So you guys, I actually don't know why we're doing this topic. But um, so I hate it when an entrepreneur is starting out or like scaling up or whatever. You know, entrepreneurs normal to go through cash flow crunches. But I hate it when they like in a cash flow crunch, and they tell me like, no, I can't do this because I have no money. I'm like, make a plan. And that is my thing is... Um, you can always make a plan. When I started my um, audit firm, I started with 
nothing. I made the furniture from paper. I went onto YouTube. I'm not even joking. I went onto YouTube and I can still make paper furniture today, which by the way, that's another hack. <laughs> if you don't want to buy expensive stuff, make it yourself. There is so many things you can actually make yourself. And I like my furniture more now because it's special and it looks different and I paint it really nice. You can't even see that it's not like normal furniture. I promise you, it's, it's insane what you can actually make if you want to. With that, let's go to Jog. So now everyone's covered it. Um, get yourself help early. Um, so I, I, I try and support like a hundred people with my business. So I'm like, I'm like the box, I'm like the boxer, and they all are there to help me uh, succeed in the ring. So because I spend money like, you know, I was, I was definitely born in a Bentley at some stage, and I think money just fucking is brilliant. I mean, I had the silver spoon yanked right out of my mouth and one day I'll share the story. So I just spend money. So I've now got an ex-partner who pays me my salary because if I have to pay myself, I will spend it all. So I know that someone pays me my salary and it doesn't matter how I whinge, that's all I can get. But the point I'm making is know your weaknesses and your strengths. And um, I've got a VA that does all my books. I've got an accountant that does everything. And and when t times are tough, I look at them and I think, mm, they've got hungry mouths to feed. I better do more business so I can keep supporting the team that's supporting me. So that always drives me to, to make enough money so that I can support that team. Because without them, I'd be nothing. That's me. Yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. I think, I think that in this day and age, um, especially in the time where we've been forced to work from home or separate ourselves from society just a little bit, um, we need to rely on those people. It's not a question of um, should we or shouldn't we. This is the direction that everything is going in. If we look at the trends and we look at um, where things are actually going, well, this is where it's going. It's going into a space where no longer do you need to be a lonely entrepreneur. You can actually generate and create teams of people that support your business and vice versa and become more successful in the process. Um, well, sorry, uh, if I could just interject. People say you're a one-man business. I'm, I actually have 15 people that I, I help support. So I, have a, I am a 15-man woman business. And... And that's and my job is that's that's how I can do my little bit is by making more money so I can employ more people to help me. And in my small way, I can create jobs. That's what we all have to do. We can't keep that money to ourselves. We need to spread that money and create jobs for all our partners. And that's how we're going to save South Africa. And that's how we're going to save the global economy. Mm. That's kind of the reason why we're doing this. <laughs> All right, so I, yay, okay, yeah, I, I hooked into the philosophy without even knowing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Where's Brilliant. The drink? I need a drink. Brilliant. Great <laughs> minds think alike. Cool. Okay, um, Peter, we have time for one more question. So can we um, ask Estelle's question, please? Okay, here we go. This is a question from Estelle, and I will speak straight into the view using the wrong microphone. <laughs> so. Because Peter was the first to set up the right microphone for our travels. And Peter didn't Peter, do that. Peter did, and then the sound didn't work. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so here's, your, here's your question. How much time do you spend on, a, on financial planning every month, and how much time should we be spending? So how much time do we spend on financial planning, and how much time should we be spending? And we want the real answers. <laughs> like five minutes? How much time do you spend on financial planning every month and how much time should you be spending let's hear from sharon it's my day job i spend a lot of time on financial <laughs> planning <laughs> and for your own business sharon <laughs> and for uh, my own business you what i do with it and, and i do for myself what i do for my clients i start with um you know obviously when you start off you kind of need to fully understand what your picture is. And uh, so I generally spend about an hour and a half on a first appointment with somebody just getting to know them. 
um, before I've even had any conversations about um, what plan, what I introduce what planning is and I get to know them and understand where it is that they want to be, what the current picture is, um, and then go and put a plan together. And it must be reviewed. I don't think it's it, you know, I don't think one review, reviews your personal plan every month. It would get too labor intensive, but at least once a year, just go and have a look at has there been a life changing impacting event on your um, on your life because it's essentially that's when your plan could change because that's what we do our job is to improve the outcome of impacting events in for somebody's life so if something happens you give your financial planner a call otherwise you review once a year and just make sure you're on on track Thank you, Sharon. That is valuable information. Um, I will have to talk to you because I don't have a plan. <laughs> that we need to fix. <laughs> um, what what interest? What I do is I spend as little time as possible on it because I don't like doing it. <laughs> but what I do do, what I do do, I was just thinking about this. It's whenever I get demotivated, and Stephen knows this happens a lot. Um, so I don't want to do the stuff I'm supposed to be doing anymore. I will go back and I will just check my revenue streams part of the financial plan. And I'll check that what I'm doing every day, like, is that actually feeding one of the, which, which part of the revenue streams is it feeding? If it's not feeding any revenue streams, I know I'm doing something wrong. We need to stop doing that. Um, and if it is feeding, then at least I know I'm still on track because my whole thing is same time on what's going to make you money. I learned that from Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Let's go to Rita. Rita, how much time do you spend on your financial planning and how much should you be spending? Uh, Mistine, as ex-accountants, we know how important it is to have our cash flow going in our business and, and make sure that that is there. Otherwise, <laughs> We're swimming in the dark. Um, so it, it is very important. It is and I think, uh, and we've touched on this, that we do have the tools to ensure that that financial planning that we do through our business cash flow, through our business income statement, is available for us today in the cloud that we can log in from anywhere and access that. So if you do that on a daily basis, then it is really 10 minutes a day that you do. But if you leave it until the end of the month, then the poor boy is going to eat the fan somewhere along the line because then there's expenses that um, you haven't budgeted for and, 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 yeah, then you've got serious problems. So, yes, I do mine on a daily basis, five minutes every day, pop in there, make sure that everything is there um, because I've got the tools to do it. it. It allows me to pull my bank feeds through. It's there. I just need to uh, quickly log in and see what's going on. But it is crucial for any, any business. If you're in the manufacturing side and you don't know what your GP is on a daily basis, you are lost. You are truly, truly lost. Rita Skuman, Coaching with Heart. Oh, awesome. Um, so, so what I'm picking up is, is that there's is definitely a difference between financial your financial plan and your budget. So if we look at yeah, your... Can, sorry, Peter, can I just, uh, can I interject there? Because you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, the figures and within your business, every, one looks at regularly, but there's a difference between your business financial um, situation and your personal financial plan. They are two completely different, um, they're, they're, they're two different babies. So... Um, uh, so, I mean, Rita's absolutely right there. I mean, you would not want to take your eye off the ball when, it's, when it comes to the finances of your business. Um, but that's not necessarily what setting up your own personal financial plan is all about. Um, that would be something completely, uh, completely different. So um, Rita's right, um, but one needs to differentiate between um, a setting up a personal plan. I mean... You, your own personal plan, you really don't want to be looking at every day. 
but obviously within your business you do. So yeah, I know Rita's right. Awesome, guys. Um, let's hear from Janine. Janine, you had your heart up. So and then I always I have my question. heart up. There's something about your face that makes me forget the question. I don't know how to take that. I, um, is it a compliment or what? I don't know how to take that. <laughs> how much time do you spend on your financial planning every month and um, how much should you be spending? Yeah, I think you should be spending once a day. Um, the time around that is up to you. But I don't do that once a day. I do that every Saturday morning I spend on financial planning because you know, financial planning help you to determine your short-term and long-term goals, which, by the way, you should have as a business owner, is goals. And there's ways to, with your income, you know, you can manage your income effectively, actually, and you can monitor your cash flow. So you have to stay focused. And if you don't know how to do that, phone the experts, hashtag Sharon Alberts, phone them. They know what they're talking about. So yeah, I'm Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. Thank you, Janine. By the way, Rita, you'll enjoy this. Um, literally, I'm so bad. I'm supposed to be an accountant, right? But I'm not doing that anymore. I'm now a networking company owner, runner, slash personal assistant to Peter. But um, <laughs> so I only did our actual like accounting work this month because I was getting um. WhatsApps from some of our customers saying, can I please just pay you this month? I, I haven't gotten an invoice. I just want to give you money. Like, kick it, please. Like, should I, like, bring it to your house? Or <laughs> it's really bad. But I aim to be like you. I, I have to just do my 10 minutes every day, I think. Um, no, 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 no. Actually, you don't actually need to aim to be like Janine. I need to aim to buy Janine. You need to aim to have a Janine. Yes. yes. Okay. I've got it. Got it. <laughs> okay. Megan, you had your heart up. Um, how much time do you spend on your financial planning and how much should you be spending? Uh, I think I was really just reacting to yours, but it is just that. Again, not um, business. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm focusing on business. And again, I do mine weekly. It's my Friday tasks. So that's why I love Friday afternoons. And I just pop in, check what my income expenses are just once a week. That's what I do. And like Rita says, if you have systems like zero and stuff, it makes it a bit easier. If you don't and you've got your Excel tracking form, it's just nice. At least if you don't do it once a week, try and do it at least once a month. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but yeah, just keep tracking your your business expenses i promise you i know it seems like a mundane task but it actually really gives you responsibility and makes you grow up um, when you start managing and tracking your expenses so mine's just weekly personally but if not weekly then definitely once a month that's me megan from the marketing lifeline um, if if i'm not mistaken going over your finances once a week keeps you informed there's, there's a certain power to being informed. When you are informed, you have knowledge. When you have knowledge, you have power. And with that power, you can make the right choices, the right decisions. Should I, shouldn't I, do I, don't I, can I, can't I? Well, if you're not informed, you don't know the answer to those questions. And then you end up making silly choices and putting yourself into a position that you actually can't afford to be in. So do yourselves a favor. If it's something that you don't do regularly because you just don't like doing it, well, you've just met the people that do like doing it. So reach out, have a coffee, see how they do it, see if they can do it for you, see how much it costs, see how much it saves you. Be informed. Mm. Awesome, guys. This was a oh, sorry, just one more thing, Nestine. It's just maybe not totally relevant, but it, I think it may be. It also helps you, as you mentioned, the measuring to see like, okay, so I had three meetings this week. From this week, I actually got one, one job. Okay, guess what? I need to have more meetings. Or I've been doing email campaigns, and guess what? I've got no leads, so let's change. So it's also a little bit about tracking and measuring your activities. It's not just about your know, measuring in terms of your expenses and income, but it does allow you to also see what is working and bringing in the leads, because that's where you want to spend more time and money. Sorry. Thanks, guys. 
Thank you, Megan. Mm. That was actually important. I'm really happy you interjected. Um, the don't think of it as a thing in a silo, I think. And that's the mistake that even I made as an accountant. I was like, I know my accounting. I know I need to do it. But I wasn't bringing it through to what I'm actually doing in a day and linking it to my productivity. Productivity is something I am super passionate about as an entrepreneur. So the minute Stephen helped me to link productivity to cash flow, that is when my business actually started working. So, yeah. But this has been an awesome, awesome episode, guys. Thank you so, so much. Let me just put you on gallery view so everyone can see you. Guys, these are the expert entrepreneurs, all the nicest entrepreneurs from around the world. They've got the experience. You've just heard from them. Um, all their LinkedIn links are in the description below. Go and connect. These are the people you want to have by your side on your entrepreneurial journey. It's not necessary to do it alone. It's not necessary to even have questions because if you have questions, just ask us. We'll ask them. Well, and if you think about it, we haven't walked this journey alone. And we've walked this journey with some of the most amazing coaches, some of the most amazing professionals within their field. And look at how beneficial it's been to us. Super beneficial. Like, this is the hack. Cream of the crop. This is absolutely brilliant. The hack. <laughs> On that note, I love you guys. And uh, we will be here again, same time, same place next week on youtube ready to answer all of your entrepreneurial questions if you have questions for us put them in the comments we'll collect them we'll force our team members to answer them for you and go and connect with these people we'll see you again next week same time same place love you lots and make all your wildest entrepreneurial dreams come true catch you on the flip side bye facebook <laughs>